Good day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curators. Uh, as some of our past episodes, we briefly spoke about the, uh, is this the pr- correct word not to say, necessity of doing uh, research on uh, Masonic memorabilia. And you may ask, you know, Keith, how, how am I going to do uh, research on items? Well, you know, the internet today is nothing like when I first started off as a curator. Um, there is an awful lot of items that are on the uh, online today. A lot of books uh, on what uh, I think ebooks, uh, archive, Google Books, whatnot that you can open up and read. Matter of fact, here is a book by Brother Wright that I mentioned back in episode number 84 with Lou and I. We talked about chapter pennies. And even though this is 1901, uh, here's a book about Masonic chapter pennies that I was able to download, and boom, it's right in my collection now. And it didn't cost me a, th- a thing except for the copy paper. There's another bunch of other books that are online that you can find. Most of these right here uh, reference books are from Chuck's personal uh, reference library. And for those who did not see the episode, and I recommend that you go back, uh, John and I did an episode while we were in Somerville, episode number 67, where we talked about doing research and what that means and how does that benefit you. Um, you know, for you people who are non-Masons, uh, you probably really, well, you may know, but you may also not know, and a lot of Masons don't know. You don't even know! The amount of stuff that was ever made. Um, I've been a collector and I was a curator for well over 35 years. I have probably not even seen a hundred thousandths of a millimeter of <laughs> whatever was it made. I mean, you stop and think about it. Coins, medals, jewels, aprons, collars, batons, belts, swords, uh, shields. Uh, there were spears, there were chairs, there were furniture, pedestals, lights. Uh, there were gas globes, there were books, there was paperwork. Oh, Lord, there's trench art, there's tramp art, there is folk art, there's Americana. There are banks, there are toys, uh, there are, um, oh my goodness, there are prints, paintings, photographs, there are postcards, there is carpeting, uh, there are mock master mason jewels, there are staffs, there are various rods, there are banners, there are flags, uh, there are ballot boxes, um, it, it goes on and on and on. And that's not even touching personal jewelry like watch fobs or Masonic balls or pocket watches or rings or charms or bracelets or earring. It, it's mind boggling. You have to have some knowledge and if you don't have the knowledge you need to have some backup, backup reference material. Now most of these books are Chuck's that you see here. He has a great number of books. Some of these I've had in the past. Um, I've met him once, Julius Clark. Uh, he put out an excellent, I think there were four books in the series that he put out. I believe one or two were on the Dudley watches, the other one in the timepieces, and, and here on clocks. Um, there are other books that were put out. Uh, by the uh, various Scottish Rite uh, museums. Uh, here's a wonderful piece by William Wallace on the Dudley Masonic Watch. Uh, Chuck has a whole <laughs> stack of, of books here. Another one written by a, my friend here, Fraternal Swords, who I mentioned about uh, in one of the early episodes. Uh, I've also brought my reference books. Uh, these are binders that go back uh, almost 40 years now. Uh, and some of the earliest uh, prints that I have here go back to 1868 from uh, Masonic catalogs. Uh, and I still, today, still use these uh, catalogs or reference material today, especially now with Masonic curators, that I'm seeing a lot more and unusual items. 
And believe it or not, I am still downloading, after almost 40 years, still downloading material uh, for my own reference books. Where do you find us? Go on eBay. Follow, you know, they have Masonic catalogs. We get any catalogs for sale. Uh, and a couple of the sellers, you know, will post pictures of the pages. Well, follow it. Or you could copy the image. You don't have to buy the book, you can copy the image. <laughs> uh, Chuck here has one from CE Ward, which is one of the great fraternal uh, regalia companies. And you should also know a little bit about the history of the various regalia companies because one bought out the other and bought out the other and bought out the other. Uh, I think C.E. Ward is now part of New London, which bought out, I believe, Henderson and bought out, and Henderson bought out Ames. Um, it, it just it goes on and on and on. Um, and then there's your various companies over in the UK uh, that does English Constitution up in Canada. Uh, Toy, who had places in both Scotland, Ireland, I mean, Scotland, I think Ireland, England, and in South Africa. Um, material comes to you in all different directions. Uh, it will also come to you in publications. Uh, and some of these publications are online. Uh, free to look at, free to download. Uh, Chuck is one Northern Light. And this talks about, I believe, some of the uh, Masonic watch fobs. Um, I picked this one here. John gave me a whole bunch of these. This is called the Masonic Craftsman that was put out by uh, here in Massachusetts back in the 1930s. And um, this one doesn't have a lot, but it will have little ads in here for regalia company. So you can get addresses if you need to have the address or some of the other items. Some of them will also post pictures of some of the items that they're selling. Not only were the advertisement are useful, but there are some, some cases that they actually talk about postcards and whatnot. So there's some great articles written in the past that are on Masonic memorabilia in some of these proceedings and a lot uh, uh, publications. And not only did some of the Scottish Rite boys put them out, but a lot of the uh, jurisdictions of various um, Grand Lodges here in, in um, the U.S. put out various publications over the years. Where else would you find uh, information about Masonic memorabilia? Well, it takes a lot of reading and a lot of research, but, you know, here's a book written in uh, 1970 that I have in my personal collection, uh, The Stalwalt Builders, about the history of our Grand Lodge of Masons of Massachusetts. And in it, they talk about a few items that have been donated. Um, where they came from and how they came from, like Liverpool pictures. Here's one here. Now you may not think this is a reference material, but it is. It is put out here in the U.S. back in 1871, uh, the General Register of Freemasonry, and it lists all of the Masonic lodges at the time in the various jurisdictions. Why? Well, you come up with a baton from A.B. Lodge number 170. That's it. Well, where is it? Here you go. <laughs> Not only do your own proceedings have that information, but you know, once a lodge goes out, their numbers are usually gone, removed from the ranks. Uh, so how do you find a lodge? Well, you get to go in the past. And here you go. Um, takes time. Lodge histories. Not always correct. But there are some mistakes sometimes, but large histories, because they will tell you in it that this gavel was given to this so and so forth, or this penny was given to this so and so forth, or whatever. They have some historical information in it on where some of these items came from, who gave them, what, what they were made of. Um, and again, you can find some of these publications online, either for sale and or uh, on some of the free book sites that they've been downloaded. <clears throat> you can go to your own Grand Lodges, your own Grand Lodge libraries and museums. Uh, they have, some of them have folders on various lodges and books uh, on the various histories. Um, and just look around your own building. Um, many lodges wrote histories. Um, you can sit down and read them. 
uh, and find out where some of the stuff came from. Uh, reference material in today's society is a much needed thing because I, I just said there, there was so much made. And you think that it's just in the past, it's not. Uh, so much is still being made and reproduced. Uh, there are firing glasses that are still being made today. Uh, there are glass marbles that are still being made. There are coins that are being reproduced like the 1790 half pence uh, English uh, half penny um, uh, coin that was reproduced I think in the 80s or 90s. It was uh, uh, replicas that were, that were made from the original from 1790. Um, there are flasks that are being reproduced. Uh, the Sturbridge Village in Sturbridge, Massachusetts made them in the, I think the late 70s, early 80s. They made a couple of the Masonic uh, reproduction flasks. Um, so there's a lot still being put on the market. And as time goes on, who knows if that golf ball with the Masonic Square and compasses might be a collector's item 150 years from now. Um, and who want, somebody's going to know, want to know where it came from, who made it. Um, <clears throat> so reference material is needed. And as Chuck and I showed you, that Masonic medal that Chuck was able to purchase, the Knight Templar uh, membership medal from Apollo Commandery Number 1 in um, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, doing the research uh, is going to add to the chiching value. That's for all you Masonic investors out there. Uh, the chiching value. And for us collectors out there, uh, it's going to add, greatly add to the historical value of the piece. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of stuff on there with people's names and whatnot on it swords and coins and jewels and medals, uh, which is the stepping stone on how you can get some of the research done. And these are some of the wonderful books that are out there. Um, you can still find some of them today on the market. Uh, it probably took Chuck a number of years to pick these up. There are still some that I believe I had that still aren't here, like the King's book on chapter pennies. Um, that are kind of hard to find, but you know, in time you can you can add to them and and read them. Don't don't look at the pretty pictures, guys. Okay, read them. Uh, read the little you know description underneath. And read the book. There's there's some good information in there. Uh, so with that, we hope that you can get off with a good start with making your own uh, reference library or making your own you know, reference books. Uh, either way, great. If you're a computer whiz, do up your own programs. Uh, and you can have it right there on your phone uh, when you're out going shopping. So uh, with that, we want to thank you very much and thanks for watching. <laughs>